My name is Jeffrey Zwern, and I'm the president of IDS Research and Development Incorporated. This video is copyrighted. This is a Tyco Power Series Pro Alarm Controller, model number HS3032. Connected to it is a DSC Power Series Neo expansion module and a hardwired RF keypad, model number HS2L CDR F Pro 9 ENG. There is also a DSC Power G Host transceiver module, a Tyco wireless smoke detector, and a DSC TL880L TVZN wireless radio alarm transmitter powered by alarm.com. The system is connected to a siren and is being monitored by a UL listed central station. I will now activate the wireless smoke detector to show the system detects it and then a fire alarm signal reports to the central station. As you can see, the central station has received an alarm signal. As you can see, the system at the central station received a cancel and a restore from the fire. I am now going to perform a burn test on the core bus of this Power Series Pro HS3032 control panel. The system has a siren and is being monitored by a UL listed central station. The core bus can be running anywhere throughout the home, inside walls, in attics, in garages, in basements. The core bus has been shorted. All of the system keypads are non-functional. The RF hardwired keypad is non-functional. The transceiver is non-functional. Now I'm going to look and see what the central station received as a result of the core bus being shorted. As you can see, the central station received a system peripheral trouble. No indication that a fire emergency is occurring in the home and the fire department will not be notified. This is the sixth edition of UL 985, which the DSC control panel represents to comply with. Under section 41.3.1.3 it states, short circuit or open circuit single faults in the non-fire equipment 
or in the wiring between the non-fire equipment and the fire alarm system shall not impede or impair the monitoring for integrity of the fire alarm system, nor impede or impair any fire alarm signal transmissions or operations. Under 41.3.1.4 it states, single ground faults which impede or impair the monitoring for integrity of the fire alarm system or impede or impair any fire alarm supervisory or trouble signal transmissions or operations shall be reported at the household fire alarm system user interface per the requirements of 44.2 whether they occur in the fire alarm equipment, non-fire alarm equipment or wiring. The term user interface is a remote system keypad. This control panel does not comply with these provisions of UL 985. This is an NFPA 72 code matrix from the 2002 edition of NFPA 72 to the 2019 edition of NFPA 72. While some of the sections have changed over the years, the reference is still the same. Faults and other systems or components shall not affect the operation of the fire alarm system. My video demonstrates that this Power Series Pro control panel, the HS3032, does not comply with this provision of NFPA 72. Further in NFPA 72 it states, where common wiring is employed for a combination system, the equipment for other than the fire alarm system shall be connected to the common wiring of the system so that short circuits, open circuits, grounds, or any fault in this equipment or interconnection between this equipment and the fire alarm system wiring does not interfere with the supervision of the fire alarm system or prevent alarm or trouble signal operation. This DSC control panel does not comply with this provision of NFPA 72. In response to a LinkedIn post on November 24, 2020, entitled DSC Confirms Fatal Defect in Fire Alarm, I received a letter from Johnson Controls on November 27, 2020. Here, DSC states that if the communication bus wiring were to be shorted, as in your video, where the communication bus wires are melted by a blowtorch, the panel would power down without any indication on the keypad. While the statement about the blank keypad display is accurate, due to the keypad powering down in such a situation, the statement that the panel itself would power down is not accurate. It further states, these panels have a resettable fuse, PTC, that would trigger in the event of a communication bus wire shortage, allowing the main panel to remain powered up. If programmed, the panel would attempt to communicate the various faults and or troubles caused by the short to the central station. The panel would also retain the ability to sound wired siren bells that are connected directly to it. In addition, the integrated dialers and cellular communicators for these products are powered separately and, in the case of such a short, would remain powered and able to transmit events. In accordance with the plain language of UL 985 6th edition and NFPA 72, the keypads cannot power down. They must remain functional in order to provide the requirements set forth in both UL 985 6th edition and NFPA 72. With regards to the panel remaining powered, if the keypads go out, is meaningless because the sirens do not sound during the fire alarm, the keypads do not sound during the fire alarm, and the central station does not receive fire alarm signals so that the operators can immediately notify the fire department to respond to the fire emergency at the protected premises. Consistent with that is that Johnson Controls admits that all that's sent is faults and her troubles. A fault and her trouble condition is not a fire alarm signal. The sirens must sound throughout the house in Temporal 3. The keypads must sound in the home. And the central station must receive fire alarm signals. Further, Johnson Control states reviewed the test method used in your video linked to your post and have found that the test methodology does not properly follow U UL 985 6th edition guidelines, and that the specific UL 985 6th edition sections referenced in the post and video are not being correctly interpreted. 
Additionally, the test setup in the video does not appear to have a method of communication, siren or smoke detectors connect to the panel, further invalidating the test and claim results. My test regarding this letter proves that the control panel does not comply with the 6th edition of 985 or NFPA 72 standards. Regarding the interpretation of UL standards goes back to the plain language of the standards. You read the section of the standards and then you test the control panel to see if it complies with those standards. Here, the control panel does not comply with the plain language of the 6th edition of UL 985 and NFPA 72. This letter was sent by Ms. Tasman Parani, the Vice President of Global Engineering and Intrusion, and referenced also Mr. Jason Breed. Nowhere in this document is there support that the control panel complies with the 6th edition of UL 985 or that it complies with NFPA 72. 